Morning. So let's get some reaction now from Stramel Fernando. He's a foreign and security policy analyst and he joins us. You're very welcome. Uh, thanks for coming on. Firstly, what's your reaction to this uh, suggestion that uh, these attacks were in retaliation for the attacks we saw on mosques in New Zealand just last month? Yes, I mean, there, could, there, are, there are a lot of scenarios and a lot of uh, debates going on at this point. So, uh, what I feel is that they, uh, what has occurred at this point was uh, this was a very pre-planned uh, mission uh, which was uh, uh, which took place about a couple of months ago, and um, and there are external uh, foreign terrorist organizations involved in this, and uh, and today is a morning day where there are mass burials, and uh, we are quite saddened, and uh, it's a shocking thing that has happened in Sri Lanka, but now the the emergency law has been brought in. So the military gets uh, powers to arrest and question uh, suspects uh, before that it was not there. Mm -hmm. So these are things that are unfolding at, uh, at this point. And, but today is a national morning day in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Is it surprising too, uh, Srimal, that nobody has claimed responsibility for this attack yet? No names come forward, although perhaps we do know the motivation. It seems strange that we know one and not the other. Yes, but uh, by, by, by now uh, most of the uh, information is uh, revealed by the uh, government. Yesterday the government spokesman uh, in a press briefing uh, uh, mentioned the organizations that were involved from the local point. And also they have uh, arrested few foreigners, uh, one or two are from Syria, and the others uh, also are having links to uh, different groups externally. Mm. And Interpol is uh, on its way uh, to investigate further and help the Sri Lankan authorities to uh, unravel this mystery. Um, but uh, I would say uh, Jamaat Islamia organization uh, that is involved. And uh, it is also linked to uh, external uh, uh, extremist group uh, in, maybe in the Middle East. Um, so far the Sri Lankan government has been pretty open, haven't they? They've also come forward and apologised for not uh, acting on intelligence they had received earlier. Uh, why did they fail to act on that intelligence? Uh, one thing was that uh, after 2009, when the Sri Lankan conflict ended, um, and after a couple of years, the, the law that uh, the military, the tri forces had, uh, was taken out. Uh, it was under the Terrorism Act. And uh, only yesterday, uh, by the president, the, under, emergencies, uh, em under the emergency law, Section 2, uh, the, the tri forces got the powers to uh, in interrogate and to investigate. Um, even if a country receives intelligence, they cannot make arrest and uh, uh, even question anybody. So that was the prevailing situation that the military uh, chief in Sri Lanka yesterday mentioned in his press briefing. So, so now things will uh, be uh, uh, settling down and I mean I hope and the president has assured that such attacks will not happen in the coming months or anything. They will take necessary policy. Uh -huh. uh, do, yeah, do you thanks. think that's reassuring for the public and for Sri Lankans in general? Because a curfew has been imposed. I mean, that would suggest that perhaps there is a fear that there could be further attacks, or is that going too far? Uh, there were two scenarios when the curfew was imposed. One was to uh, stop backlashes between the communities uh, because there were a large number of deaths. So, and also uh, public were on the streets and if such uh, devices gets activated like the IEDs and all uh, which the military could have found, so there could be other casualties. So there were two scenarios to, one is to prevent and one is to uh, calm down the situation mm. uh, because uh, there, were, there, there, there was going to be burials uh, uh, by today and by tomorrow. So just to calm down and to bring the situation under control, only uh, this, this, these precautions were taken. But the curfew was lifted yesterday morning, but once again it will be imposed in, in by evening. Uh, and, and looking at the long term and a wider picture, is there a feeling or is there a concern that the country could descend again into some sort of conflict, internal conflict and instability? Uh, I mean, it looks first, I mean, when such things happen in any country, this type of things, uh, it looks... Uh, this, uh, this scenario, this is a very small group, uh, uh, a small extremist group 
has carried out this uh, act uh, aiming a large uh, promotion of their ideology as well as to uh, give a message because this is a Christian minority community because the, 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 this has Tamils as well as Sinhalese uh, in also earlier the conflict was about Sinhalese and the Tamils now this has been named on the Sinhalese and the Tamils so it's 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 not dividing it's more uniting the factor but uh, there is a grave concern how we are going to curtail with extremism which is controlled by external countries so that's one one concern mm. yeah OK, Stramal, look, really nice to talk to you. Very good to get your analysis on this. Uh, that was Stramal Fernando. He's a foreign and security policy analyst. Thank you.